Hello and welcome to all of you. Uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in your time zone. Uh, Pakistan Agile Development Society, Agile PK is uh, back again with, with another webinar. And this time, we have chosen the topic of the webinar, which is for the product owner. We will touch it a little bit. Not only the product owner, but the concept which is given in the which is servant leadership. So, this concept of servant leadership is fit in with a product owner. So, आज हम इस पर बात करेंगे और इस पर हमारे साथ बात करने के लिए हमने दावत दी एंड वेरी वी आर वेरी थैंकफुल टू मिस्टर ग्रेग ग्रेग जो है उनकी मुझे शौरत अकरम देखें तो काफी सारे जी ब्लॉग्स चलाते हैं और ऑलमोस्ट अराउंड 500 के करीब ये ब्लॉग्स चला चुके हैं 5 एएम इनके ब्लॉग का टाइम व्हिच इज वेरी रेयर वेरी यूनिक सुबह 5 बजे ये अपना ब्लॉग चलाते हैं दे ही इज बेस्ड आउट ऑफ यूएस इसके अलावा ही इज एन एजाइल कोच अ चेयर लीडर एज़ वेल अ वेरी वंडरफुल पर्सनालिटी एंड एजाइल प्रैक्टिशनर एज़ वेल सो वेलकम टू मिस्टर ग्रेग हेलो मैन हाउ आर यू गुड हाउ आर यू आई एम फाइन आई एम फाइन सो टेल मी फर्स्ट वन थिंग अबाउट व्हाई दिस इज 5 एएम अ ब्लॉग दैट यू डू वेरी अर्ली इन द मॉर्निंग व्हाट्स द रीजन बिहाइंड दैट वेल लाइक एवरीबॉडी once the day starts it goes away and you don't have time the nice thing about two things there are two reasons why i did it one at 5 a.m theoretically none of my family is awake so i can get it done and i'll have kids and cats and wife coming in and, and and interrupting it and then two um i have a lot of people all around the world so in pakistan india 5 a.m was a good time in that time zone to talk and share ideas so it kind of worked that way anyhow because as an agile coach a lot of times I'm on the call at 5:30 6 a.m. in the morning talking to people around the world so it worked out just perfect wow that's, that's a, a, a very interesting kind of logic, logic. so you, you have, have no one to disturb you and, and you, you can, can just focus on what you are going to talk or what you're going to deliver so yeah, that's fantastic So, so what, what about, about I mean what's, what's the topic, topic? I mean uh, I, I I just, just wanted, wanted to as we were a bit late due to some technical issues so I just wanted to hand over the virtual floor to you to take you uh, so, so you can, can take us through to the next session of the, the, the topic that we have the product owner and the servant leadership concept okay um yeah. so I'm going to bring up uh share my screen leadership uh first slide yeah. Okay. Yes, and I can see the logo of Pakistan Agile Development Society as well. Yeah, yeah. no, I'll put that in the beginning. I like it. It's a <laughs> nice logo. I like the logo. So I'm going, going off to the stage, stage the, the virtual stage, stage now, and floor is yours, man. Okay. The only thing I'll ask for you when we do comments, because I can't, I don't have two screens up. So when we do the questions, um, I'm I jump am back. here to facilitate, facilitate you, my dear. dear. Don't okay. you worry at all. all right. I'll be, I'll be uh, gathering, gathering all the queries. Whatever, whatever we have and i'll be throwing it to you or if you ask any question and if in case we get the answer i'll share it with you okay um so i want to start off we're, we're we're having this discussion in the in the chat what do you all think a servant leadership what does that mean to you if you want a quick i know you're like oh we just started this thing he's asking us questions already so in the chat <laughs> write some words single words couple words that you think servant leadership means okay so guys okay the audience let's let's wait for their comment let's wait for their command uh, but meanwhile if they if they share their comment i guess the servant leadership i guess is is to just serve first and then lead and that is not from the front but let the team lead yeah. uh, or celebrate this is this i like is that you, you came up with a the whole thing is like you you went right into it with the questions first i'm letting the the team serve up and then we're going to take it from there right and back, back, back on, on scrum yeah yep yeah. so Carry on. just the other day scrum uh the scrum guides there's a new scrum guide that came out um it's the 2020 version of the guide and these are the three roles that are in there we have developer it used to be develop a uh, um development team now they're just calling one of the roles a developer 
we have the product owner and we have the scrum master. What we're going to talk about more is about the product owner role in this. Uh, I'm trying to make a short presentation so we can do some more interaction. So I wanted to highlight a couple things just in case you haven't seen it and talk about these things as we go and then we'll ask some other questions. Product owner. The product owner is accountable for maximizing the value of product resulting from work at Scrum Team. So that's one of the big points. And then these are just what's in the 2020 guide. Accountable for active or, or effective product backlog management. Um, developing, communicating product goal. Clearly creating and clearly communicating product backlog items, ordering them, and ensuring the product backlog is transparent and visible, right? Those are pretty uh, self-explanatory. Now, here's some things that are that I like out of this guide. A couple other lines. The product owner um, may be above, it may, you know, do the above work, but may also delegate. So that's a new thing, may delegate responsibility to others. This is where that PA, the, the business analyst role comes into play. And also maybe a tech lead role that might come to play if there's a story that's led by a technical manager. That new line gives you that permission to share. Um, you know, they want everybody to succeed. And this is a very key point here. The product owner is one person not a committee and i want to say you know from a leadership perspective you can't lead by committee lead by committee always fails so that's why there's one product owner in scrum and not like five so you have one product owner for a team they make the call they 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 take the responsibility right now kind of want to get into some more little points in here that they brought up and we talk about leader and servant. The product owner jumps between a leader and servant role all throughout the process. You know, here it says the product owner orders the work for a complex problem into a product backlog. That's where they're taking the lead. By ordering the work in the right order, that's a leadership role. Then there's another line in there which I really appreciate as a agile coach facilitator product owner ensures that attendees are prepared to discuss the most important backlog items this is where they're playing the servant role so the, the role of the product owner is to serve the attendees of the team to make sure they're prepared it's not just to show up at a meeting and just drop stuff on people without any any uh, prep work so that's a very big difference. Some people don't think about that, but their job is to send out an agenda. Here's the item we're going to talk about. Here's what I want to do ahead of time so the team can read that information and not just show up in the meeting, right? Um, sprint planning, one topic. This is a new one. This is brand new um, in the 2020. In sprint planning, topic one, why is this sprint valuable? To me, that's a leadership call. That's where the, the product owner has to know why we're doing what we're doing and explain to not only in the team, but external to the team, why what we're doing is valuable. And the team depends on the product owner to do that job for them. Greg. Right. Yes. Can, can we have, have a few questions, questions, I guess? Yeah, uh, yeah. You got questions? Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. The, the audience, audience, I guess, guess are not charged at those. So. I see a few queries uh, Go for fun it. from Sidra Malik. In new guide, there is no servant leader. Why? <laughs> yes, she's a bit annoyed on that. And how it will work here with BO? I mean, since the role or the, the talk that we do a lot about servant leadership is mm -hmm. for new guide, there isn't any anything. It's, it's only the leader. So how does it fit in or how will it work with, with here with BO, with, with the new guides? Well, uh, the servant leader is a type of leader, right? There is a dictatorial leader. There's a leader from that's, you know, in the background. 
and there's maybe another version as a ser servant leader. So this is a type of leader that performs well in a scrum environment, if that makes sense. Okay, okay. And I hope uh, your, your queries answered to the, the next question is from Naz Ahmadi, and she okay. says that, uh, thanks for such presentation. I have a question on Scrum rules. Mm -hmm. I guess rules are also now, there is no uh, role concept as per the new guide, but let's see. Uh, if you could explain the role of customer in Scrum. The role of customer in Scrum is a stakeholder. Yeah. So if you see the word stakeholder, that's the customer. Yeah. And then there is another thing uh, from Mr. Ahmed. He asked, mm -hmm. what would the role for business product manager here? That would also be in the stakeholder. Okay. Okay. So these are the query that we have got so far. Okay. And you can carry on. I just wanted yeah. these queries to be answered as well. So the audience uh, get to know what they are asking. Yeah, and I think we're going to touch on another, I have a thing I call, I call scrum communication circles. And we're going to tap, um, tap into a lot of the stakeholders, the product managers and things like that. So we're going to hit, we're going to talk about that in a, in a second also. Carry on, carry on. I'm okay. putting again to off myself. Yep. Okay. Um, scrum core. There's some Scrum values in there. I think if you're all into Scrum, you see the commitment, courage, focus, openness, and respect. Um, and then we have transparency as a inspection and adaption, the three pillars, the uh, empirical system. Does anybody see any of these when you talk about leadership? Right. When we talk leadership, is there anybody out there that doesn't see the scrum values play into what you envision a leadership to be a leader? Or is it or is, is it seem like it, it, if you're a leader, you're committed to doing what you need to be done. Right. Courage. Sometimes standing in front of the team and taking all the shots first and being the first in line takes a lot of courage. Sometimes it takes courage from a team perspective to say, no, we can't do something too, right? Focus, uh, leadership keeps the team focused on what needs to be done and doesn't let them go off into all different directions, right? Um, being open, that gets into more of the servant leader. I'm open, with, I'm serving you, I'm being open with what we want to do and then respecting. And again, there's leaders who don't respect anybody and there's the leaders that respect everybody's opinion and what they have. And that's more of a servant type thing. So the first three are very much leadership driven. And the last two, in my opinion, are really servant driven, right? Are more servant oriented. So when we talk about these score, core values, how do they play as a product owner? You got to keep these, these five values in, in, in sync when you're doing your job. And then again, you answer why, right? This is a new PO leadership type role in 2020, where now the PO has to say why we're doing what we're doing, right? And that's important. Any questions on these values and pillars? And I will say just one thing, the, ins the transparency, inspection, adapt, one of the things we talk about a product owner, and I see so many teams, I personally believe a product owner should insist on a sprint review all the time. And don't let the teams get away with not doing a sprint review because they don't, quote, have anything to show. And I think that's a leadership role. It says, I want a sprint review. You're working in, my, in our sprint. You're producing value. We need to show what that value is each and every sprint. It may be controversial, but I do think from a leadership perspective, the product owner needs to stand up and do the leading on that and insist on a, a sprint review every sprint. Some places do, some places don't. They get a little lax. Any question, Any more questions so far? Okay. Um, 
here's the agile mindset. Think about some of these agile mindset questions. So this is out of the agile manifesto. We have individuals and interactions over process and tools. That's a real servant type activity. We want interactions. You know, when you interact with people, you're listening to other. You're serving them by listening to what they have. And you treat individuals, each individual with respect. Customer collaboration. Now, this is the different. These are the stakeholders, right? Now you're taking a servant leader role. You're taking a servant with your customer getting what they want. And you're also taking a leadership role and going back to the customer and says, well, we can't quite give you that right now because we're maxed out with our capacity of our team. But this is one we might be able to do it, right? So that customer collaboration involves both a servant and a leader type activity. Responding to change over following a plan. You need a leader to be able to respond to change. Somebody has to say, hey, this is coming. We need to do this. And we need to change what we're doing and go someplace and do this other thing. And that's where the leadership roles play a big role in product owner. Um, is there any questions on this side as how the agile mindset applies to a product owner? Or any not questions? yet, uh, Greg. We okay. are not getting any further questions as, as soon as I have. Okay. I'll throw it to you. Okay. And here we go. There is another question. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sadakat Ali wants to know, in software industry, PO is the one who is taking the shots. So if we ask them why in sprint planning, they are offended and how to handle this. I mean, you are challenging uh, the question says that you're challenging the product owner on, on this question, which now as per the guide says that sprint planning should go with these three questions. But the first one is why? Is it suitable or is it valuable or not? So uh, the thing that I understood from this question is it's quite general in, in the software industry of Pakistan that this, they are working for a client mm -hmm. and uh, the client, if you ask them, obviously someone has to play the role of product owner, be it a person in that software house or the soft person who is asking you to develop the product for them. Mm -hmm. So the question says, if you ask them why, they tend to feel offended. It, 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 it spoils quite kind of a relationship the the, the uh, sense of this question suggests. So how do you handle such sort of situation? Well, it's not a question of why they, why they made this the decision they made. It's why does it, how does it bring value or why does it bring value to the customer or to the organization as a whole? How does, why does it, why is it does it bring dollars to the company, right? And the reason why they ask that why question yeah. is because you want to get funding. No one's going to give you money if you can't answer why this is a value to you, to the customer. So what we're, what it's asking for is the product owners have to be prepared to answer the why question. So if you go to your product manager, which you mentioned before, and he goes, well, why are you doing that in the sprint? The product owners are expected from a professional stance to be able to answer why. We are doing this because this is going to get us, because we had a focus group and they said this would make them enjoy the product more and that's why we're doing it. Or we are doing this because we are able to sell new widgets on our website and these are the widgets, and that should bring us more revenue. We estimate it's $10 million, whatever it would be, right? So from a professional standpoint, the product owner has to be able to answer why we're doing what we're doing in a sprint. Now, remember, it's not necessary each and every story. It's why we're doing it, what we're doing in the sprint. Why does it bring value to the company, Okay. So it's more associated to the goal of the sprint. Yes. Yeah. I hope, Mr. Sadaka, you got the answer. So uh, carry on, man. But we'll talk about that. I think in the later parts, we can talk about how to make that feeling go away a little bit. And we'll talk yeah. about three documents. Okay. That's, that's the more important thing that the yeah. person is asking. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is something I came up with, and I'm going to share this presentation with you all. You can do whatever you want. I don't claim anything on it. Um, but I call these communication circles. And in there, towards the middle circle is the scrum team. It has scrum masters, uh, technical people, testers, all kinds of things like that in that area. Um, but there's also a product owner circle. And we're going to go to that next slide. But I just want to show you. These are all the like communication. That's why when people say Scrum is simple but complicated, <laughs> everybody looks at the chart. Oh my God, there's so much stuff. So this is like all the communication chains that a Scrum team has, and they wonder why they have so many meetings. Well, here's a good example. Uh, so I want to show you. I want to blow up the product owner role. So here's the product owner circle, and how we talked about those. Yes, how do the other roles? As you can see, the product owner may be a BA, and that's where I've always said you're better off with a BA not with, than not having a BA to work with a product owner, business analyst. That is, the product owner has that role within the Scrum team, as you can see the, the charts. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but the, the one team. But outside the product owner circle has epic owners, business managers, other POs, customers. BAs for other teams, um, maybe even some technical leads that are in there that are part of this product. And I always had this thing where product owners should set up their own circle meeting with all the business people outside of the team. So you're all day long talking to these other people, these customers, these stakeholders. This is the stakeholders. Um, and that's what this product owner circle is about. And maybe that's where you, where you see how that plays into a role. You can see the business managers do not have direct contact with the scrum team. Maybe at sprint, maybe at the review. But most of the work is through the product owner. Okay. Now this is where the top maybe helps out with that question where uh, product owners take offense. So in, in my opinion, there's three, I call it the documentation triad. There are three doc three documents that every team should really have if they want to be successful. Uh, and I was happy to see the definition of done is now a document or artifact or real part of Scrum 2020. So the definition of done, which is a document describing how all basically where the product owner as a leader and the team says, when we say something's done, what does that mean? What goes into it? Does the product owner approve it? Who does the review? Anything in there, the definition done. So these are documents from which the team and Scrum Master and product owner can say, hey, look, look, people. So we agree that you would have done some unit testing or you would have done a code review. And we all agree that it's not done until I approve it as a product owner. So that's part of the definition of done. So that's, it's not a, the nice thing about documents, they're not personal. They're part of the process, right? They're not a personal thing. So now that's the definition. This is where the product owner really takes a leadership role. Um, definition of ready. Now, this is where the servant role comes in. So this is where there's a definition of ready. And what that is is where the team says, product owner, we need this information in order to be the code or create the product that you want us to, pro to create maybe in there is like we would like to have a definition of why as part of the the definition already and like you would answer the question why are we doing this as part of our definition already if our feature or epic or sprint does not have a, some little statement about why we're doing this then it's not ready and this is where the product owner becomes a servant of the team provides all that information and serves that information to the team. So this is when a product owner does that. And by having a definition ready, now you take the personal thing out against the product owner. So by having a definition ready document, as you asked about before, how do you not offend them? Because if everybody agrees and the product owner agrees with the team that they will provide a why statement, it's no longer personal 
It's part of the process. So maybe this definition of ready helps with not offending the product owner, right? So they're expecting the question of why. So maybe we should add in here, this is where you put your why in. That'd probably be a good point. I'll use that in another, in another presentation, but I would put the word why in here in the definition already. This way the product owner is not caught off guard, therefore gets upset and everything like that. The last document is the working agreement, the team working agreement. This is where the product owner becomes a servant leader. And I'm going to say all these documents and I'm going to get where we need a good product owner who's a leader. So in this, the team working agreement, this is how the team says they're going to work together. Uh, we're going to email the product owner when we're done our story so they know that the, the story is ready for them to review or we all have a, a central meeting time what times our daily scrum we're only going to do 15 minutes how we're going to interact with each other we'll be open to questions we'll question it but we won't you know belittle anybody and say you're an idiot you know things like that that you might have and you might have hey we want to have a little fun doing um our retro session or our sprint review every once in a while. Those are the kind of things that go in a team working agreement. And overall, the product owner, from a leadership pers perspective, should get on the team's case and the scrum master's case if they do not have these three, docu these three documents and agreements in place. So I really think from a leadership perspective, the product owner is not a leader if they don't insist on the team having these three documents because this cuts off personalities, um, personal disrespect, you know, and people get offended. By having these three documents, you lower the ability or the chance for offense. Is there any questions on these three documents? Because I know we had some questions before. Do you think does everybody think this might help? I got a question on uh, this. Uh, okay. Uh, I hope you have already defined, but if you can share some more insight on that definition of done and ready, what's the difference? Or is this a new document in the definition of ready? Okay. So I'll give a little clarity. I don't go into it, but I'm going to give a verbal. So definition is done is when the team says the work is done and ready to go into production or ready to give to the customer or a stakeholder, right? So there the whole team and a product owner agrees how much work goes in. For example, if we just take software and no one checks it, no one does any testing, we just throw it out to the customer, it's bound to have bugs, right? There's bound to be a problem, human error what have you. By going in our definition, now we don't want to have those bugs in production in the customer's hands. We want to catch them beforehand. So we'll come up with some checks and balances in the definition of done, and we write them down. Like we'll say, hey, it should be unit test. Maybe do a code review. The product owner does a demo. They, they do a review every time on what the stuff is before it goes out. Maybe there's a group review. However, the team wants to do the definition done. Maybe there's some automated testing that's put as a package for future DevOps support, you know, things like that that's in the definition. The definition of ready, okay, the key thing about the definition of ready is that this is the information that the team needs to do the work. So maybe it's, um, Business data, customer data, um, formatting, database connections, any dependencies. It could be any of that information that we say to the product owner. When you hand us this story or epic or feature to build, we want some graphics. We want some UI. Anything that shows a difference from what we're doing to build, we expect that in there. And that's the definition ready. So the definition ready allows a team to sprint. And as I say, it's a sprint and not a marathon, right? So the idea, if 
everything's available. If the product owner says, here's everything that you asked for from a definition already, the team should be able to get it done in two weeks. There's no excuses why the team can't get that work done. Okay. And that's the difference for definition ready is at the beginning of the sprint and definition done is at the end of the sprint. And that's the two different, that's the difference between those two. Does that help? Yeah, I hope it does. Okay. I guess let's see. Uh, let's move on. There okay. we have another question from Mr. Sadaqat Ali. What do you think product ownership plan roadmap in a year? I guess that's no. to how the that's a waste. Plan. No. Yeah. Now I, I I know corporate industries. What plan? What we're gonna build? Okay, fine. Real high level, but planning a year out is a waste of time. I mean, think about it. We had COVID, right? Let's say you plan the whole year out and COVID hit. Yeah, you might as well just take the whole year and just throw it out, right? And you got to figure out what you really want to do because that forced to change. So you spend all this time and energy planning a whole year out what you want to do. You never know where your your environment, your customer, customer base is and what they want to do. I mean, look at all the businesses that were storefront businesses that had to go virtual, right? They didn't plan on all that virtual work. They had to change that right away. So all the in-store operations is like, well, we're not going to make any money on this. So let's not do this until people get back into the stores, right? Does that make sense? You never know. Yeah, I guess uh, uh, as long as that you talk about technology, it's very evolving. So it's pretty hard to plan something ahead of, I mean, for a year yeah. at the start. You're right that it, it would be, I mean, a, a bit tough so, because of the evolving or the changing technology. We, we have another question yeah. uh, from Naz Ahmadi, and she's asking that Scrum and XP can work combinedly. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, XP practices are, are more suited to Scrum. So she says, if so, what is the change on PO's role if it is combined with XP? Does it make any changes to the PO's role? I would say no. Okay. Because you're, as we talked about before, interactions, right? Bringing information. Even in XP role, the team leans on the product owner to bring that answer to questions. So when you're coding stuff and they turn to the product owner and say, is this good for what you want? The product owner has to take that leadership role and say yes, right, or no. And this is why I say no, right? So the, as far as XP and the product owner, I mean, the beautiful beauty of XP is that the customer product owners in the, in the room. You're not going to have 10 million customers in your room when you're developing code, right? That ain't going to happen. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah, perfectly. I guess we'll have the users say as well. Let's let's okay. carry on. All right, let's get. Uh, I guess I'm. Yeah, and, uh, I guess we got we got the query uh, time to time. Uh, thanks for this having a very interactive session. I mean that it kept you also uh, busy as well. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. I love having so that. We, I love having discussions and people ask questions because. People as a group, as a team, and this is what a product owner does, you, you, you set this up and there'll be this question, oh, I didn't think about that angle. And then you adjust on the fly, right, and, and, and answer some of those questions that you have. So um, is there other questions we, uh, that people we maybe we didn't answer, maybe spark some ideas? That they have. Yeah, I mean, you can you can see the chat as well. Thank you for nice and precise presentation, says Mr. Ahmad. Nice one, Mr. Greg, says Sidra Malik. And uh, I guess uh, we got uh, a good number of questions from all of them. Uh, and we covered all of the queries. I guess I did not miss any. If I missed, apologies for that. But I guess, Craig, we covered all of, all of these okay. queries, uh, isn't it? Yeah, so... I mean, if anybody wants to just throw it out there, so based on what we saw in this presentation, what does everybody, anybody want to add what they think the product owner's role is and just quickly just fill up like 
a couple points of what they think a product owner's role is after going through this presentation a little bit because it might blow up the <laughs> it's not a, there's not a lot of stuff in the scrum guide too yeah how how do you see by the way the changes that have been brought into this new guide um i hope you had joined this or you must have seen that yeah. that ceremony by ken and uh, and jeff together so what's your take on if you could quickly share while i guess that the users would take some time to write down or maybe they are done so what's what's your opinion on that the new guide of 2024 scrum so a couple of things i i like the fact that they got rid of the questions only because even though they said these are these are thoughts people took that as 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 the rule like you can only ask these three questions and there is never anything in there about only asking these three questions so when we do daily scrum i love the fact that they took that out because people were over over interpreting the guide right so that was one area i liked and then the other one is like we've talked about in the product product owner world where they say you can delegate some of the things you need to do as a product owner to other people on the team or other individuals because that was also key role because everybody said there what's the role of the ba what's the role of the business analyst there's no business analyst that one change opens that role for a business analyst to help the team out right and i and i think that's like very critical to what we're doing but they still emphasize the product owner still responsible so as a, as a coach, I always get, well, I'm the BA, so I'm going to approve my, the story and everything's done. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> I said, you can help write it and get it and, and convey that information between the business and the team, but the product owner has to approve. You know, So that gives my out back to the, the business analyst who wants to approve everything. I said, no, you're not. The PO is still responsible for everything that comes out right, um, and how well it works with the team. So. Perfect. So we got another uh, comment, I guess, okay. clear now. Mr. Dramalik says, PO is the boss of product, but they are answerable to think why the sprint is valuable. Yes. And like I said, put that in your definition already. Yeah. Or you can put that in the team agreement. There's a couple of places, you know, you don't want to do it in definition done because it's too late. You want to do it in the beginning. So that would be a definition already or maybe the team agreement. We all want to know why we're doing what we're doing in the sprint. Because Definitely. that way it's 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 out there and visible, you know, one of those things about transparency. That's the beauty of these documents. By having those three documents prepared, it's transparent what questions will come. Right? Yeah, and and, and brings more of a, a responsible a responsibility or or uh, I mean, collective ownership on, yeah. on to the team that was already there, but bringing more clarity on it would, I guess, uh, would feel uh, uh, very good at, at the developers. And so the, since there is no scrum team kind of a thing, all on yeah. the developers. And, and I always tell my scrum master, little scrum master, I know we're talking more proud of it, but I go to my scrum masters, I, like, do you have a team agreement? Well, no. Well, okay, so your biggest complaint is no one shows up for daily scrum on time. Well, did you did you have agreement of the team what time you're going to start your daily scrum? And if they're well, no. Well, then what's your expectation? There's no shared yeah. expectation. Once you write it down and show it, there's a big thing to writing stuff down. People don't. You can talk all day, but if you write it down, it becomes solid and fact, right? Okay. So there is another question from Emma. And you mentioned this is, I mean, these yeah. are pretty basic things, but people do miss miss out these things. And at the end of the day, they start complaining uh, of, of the behavior of each other. So Emmett says that as a PO, mm -hmm. how many type of documents is PO is uh, responsible for? Well, they're responsible for being part of all three of those three documents that's yeah. that's one thing but also documents everything from when they they are only really responsible for the description of the story or the the product backlog item 
that's technically the only documentation they're responsible for. Now, what goes into that PBI is in the definition already. Okay? So, they bring in, you know, if there is a UI or a sketch or a napkin drawing or whatever the team wants, they say, this is what the picture is supposed to be. You know, like, if they were just like, hey, I just need a wireframe. Um, or data, they're responsible for the information going into the document. And then, then you can also say, is this, is this an article? The sprint backlog or the product log backlog, that can be considered a document maybe, and they're responsible for that um, shape and being and cleaned up. You know, like I, I would say this. One of the things the definition ready I've always had with teams. We determine what a, and this might be controversial, story points. What's the velocity of the team? Let's just pick a number. Let's say it's 40 points. Team has been doing 40 points or 40 issues for the past five sprints. The product owner wants to bring in 60 points. They can't do that. The product owner is responsible for being a re bringing in a realistic number of points or issues that the team can complete, not some dream, right? So that part of the documentation, the product owner is responsible for only introducing 40 points worth of work. If the team comes back and says, hey, we think we can do a couple more points, then they should have a couple more stories ready to go in when that 40 points is done. So as soon as that team gets something done, they should have five, ten other stories that they can just grab and go, here, do these, feed, do this one, do this one next, do that one next. And that's what they're responsible for. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, I guess uh, we covered so many things, and thanks for your time. Uh, mm -hmm. We planned it for, for maximum 30 minutes. But yeah. I can see the time is just touching to 45 minutes. So that's 15 minutes extra. So we did three daily scrum meetings today. Yeah, we did. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah. That's okay. So thank you, man, for such a wonderful chat, for such a wonderful talk. Uh, Ahmed says, I would appreciate if there would be a little part of Racy, but we can... Uh, we can have this discussed in another presentation. Sure, we will. According to new guidelines. Thanks, Emma, for staying with us and uh, sharing your comments. Sadakat says that thanks, Greg Master, for your time to explain one more query. Or do you think PO should link user guide along with sort of steps as well as with a screenshot for with product or for easiness of users or it is not good approach? I guess that's for the for the PO to share a detailed kind of a thing that that can help the team to develop. Is this a good practice? Well, let me ask you. Okay, so the, where do you think this part comes out? Do you think it's at the beginning of the sprint or at the end of the sprint? Okay, so I guess let's let the user well, respond to this. Yeah. I guess he's the situation that he's mentioning i guess that's the that's the start of the, the well the well i would say it's actually the end of the sprint and that would be part of your definition of done so because when you do because we was i used to have my testers they would run the tests and, say, and as they're going through they would do some screen captures we would then take that screen capture and put that in the documentation and we're done okay. right because I tested, approved, I captured it as my artifact for it, I tested it. Then we reuse that artifact in the documentation. That goes in the final part that says any kind of user guide. Because the nice thing about when the testers are going through it, they'll find what the tricky part is and what really makes sense to maybe, oh yeah, that was kind of hidden. And if you don't see this little screen, you may or may not understand what to do. It passes, but I'm going to grab that little screenshot and put it at the end because Putting at the beginning means you already know the answer, but until the team codes it and builds it, you have no idea what it's going to look like, right? Okay, okay. That's an interesting perspective as well. Yeah. But thanks for answering okay. all the queries. Thanks to all the participants, all the viewers who have been, I mean, on their Sunday, sacrificing a bit of their time and then spending it with us. 
And thank you, Greg, so much for spending your Sunday a bit of time with us and, and clarifying the queries. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty solid thumbs up. <laughs> we will stay in touch, Greg. I mean, yes. the kind of response I have uh, seen throughout this uh, webinar, it's fantastic. So uh, people would definitely love, love to hear more from you on, on some other topics as well. Yeah, so my we topics, yeah. you know, all different. There's Scrum and Azure are so diverse and topic areas. Okay. And if there's ever a topic you want me to bring up, be more than have to, uh, happy to craft up something related to the topic item and, and share it with your team. Now maybe that we will we'll collect the feedback as you know that we popped up with this uh, with this uh, uh, topic of today's just because we had a few few queries and few feedbacks on this so we we, we opted to have this uh, topic for our discussion and we'll definitely have a few topics as well and we'll we'll discuss and jot down some some ideas to to work on and maybe later in this year or maybe next year we'll we'll invite you again to have another wonderful kind of discussion. Okay. Thank you and so thank much you for all. your time. I had fun. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, yete jana Greg Mester with us. And uh, for the time being, this is, I mean, it's time to say goodbye from Agile, BK, Pakistan Agile Development Society. Ki taraf se, aap loong ka work dene ka, in tamam sawalat ka, in tamam discussions me participate karne ke liye be had شکر گزار ہیں اور ہم آپ کے لیے مزید ویبینار اسی طرح سے لے کر آتے رہیں گے اپنی فیڈ بیک اپنی رائے سے ضرور آگاہ کیجیے گا اور مزید کسی ٹاپک پر ایجائل اسکرم سے ریلیٹڈ آپ کوئی بھی چیز جاننا چاہتے ہوں گفتگو کرنا چاہتے ہوں ہمیں ضرور لکھ بھیجیے ہم کسی نہ کسی ایجائل ایکسپرٹ کو آپ کے پاس لے کر آئیں گے اور آپ کے ان سوالات کا جواب دیں گے سو ٹل دا ٹائم گڈ بائی اینڈ اللہ حافظ